Hello and welcome back to my 21 for 21 project where I interview several Paralympians around the world in lockdown and look ahead to Tokyo 2021. And my next guest was a key part of Great Britain's women's wheelchair basketball squad for several years before switching to powerlifting. And we have an interesting connection. It's Louise Sugden. So Louise, let's uh, start at the beginning. We went to primary school together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. All those years ago. All those years ago, yeah. Spenham Land County Primary in Newbury. I don't remember you being particularly sporty at that point. So when did the sport kind of interest come about? Um, the sport kind of happened in, in secondary school. Um, I tried wheelchair basketball for the first time when I was 13 um, and uh, kind of went from there. What was it about the wheelchair basketball that grabbed your, grabbed your interest? Um, initially, it was that my friends thought it was cool. Um, so uh, obviously that meant that it was the thing to do. Um, and then it was kind of the, the freedom that I got on a basketball court, um, I could just push around as fast as I liked. And uh, it's just something I didn't get in everyday life. And it became much more than just something you did as a, as a bit of fun or as a, as a hobby, because it took you to, to two Paralympic Games in Beijing and, and London. So what were those two experiences like? Um, Beijing was a really interesting experience because uh, it was just so different to being um, in the UK. Um, you just got a whole different culture um, and it didn't matter who you were, the, the locals wanted to have their photo taken with you because you were Western, um, which was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then London is an experience that it's really hard to explain, but it was just phenomenal. The, the support from the crowds and everyone was just out of this world. <laughs> yeah, it was a complete one-off, wasn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what prompted then the, the switch from, from basketball to, to powerlifting, which is obviously what you're doing now? Um, so in 2014, I actually got quite ill. Um, I continued to play uh, for the World Championships that year um, and then uh, decided to take a bit of a break. And once I took a break, I just couldn't get back to the level that I needed to get back to. Um, so I tried a couple of different sports to see if there was something that didn't need quite as much fitness <laughs> and uh, powerlifting was the one that stuck. But powerlifting, although maybe fitness is, is, is a little bit less, the strength and power is, uh, is much more, I imagine, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't have imagined that I would ever be as strong as I am, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I was always strong when I played basketball, like I was the one who was at the front of the strength testing and stuff like that. So kind of thinking of it like that, it was quite a natural progression for me. Um, it was just way earlier in my basketball career that I was kind of forced to, to stop and I just wasn't done with sport. Uh, I still needed a challenge. Did, was, was there a particular person that said why don't you try powerlifting or was it one of a number of other sports you tried how, how did you actually get into that specifically um well i had a conversation over twitter with ali jawad um i think probably like just before i, I officially retired from basketball and he kind of scared me off a little bit if i'm honest <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me the amounts that these girls lift and i was like wow that's terrifying um and then when I actually retired from basketball and kind of had this void in my life, I was like, well, it wouldn't hurt to try. Um, you never know. <laughs> I could be good. I could be bad. I never really went, I want to be a power lifter. I just was like, um, let's give it a go. See how we go. And, you know, <laughs> it's worked out really, really well. <laughs> really well, yes. Commonwealth Games silver medalist in, in 2018. And I do see a boomerang lurking over your shoulder there. Is that some sort of memento from the Gold Coast? That was from uh, England weightlifting as a congratulation. And then there's the um, Broby from the Games with his little silver outfit on. <laughs> So for those who don't know, powerlifting is, is a bench press. So, you know, there'll be people up and down the country, particularly uh, in, these, in these times with kind of home gym setups or doing bench presses. So come on, what, what, is your, what is your personal best that people should be trying to match in their garages? Um, so my personal best in competition is 125 kilos. 
right wow <laughs> that's not messing about and what were you what were you what were you doing when you first entered the sport was was 125 kilos something you would have only like dreamed about completely like I couldn't like even now I put it on the bar and I'm like it's a bit scary if you think about the actual numbers <laughs> um when I first tried powerlifting um I did a very very scrappy 77 and a half so I've come a long way since then I mean I started from a really good place um but yeah it's been quite a, a crazy couple of years so is that just hours and hours and hours in, in the gym every, every day? Uh, yeah, I do uh, two to three hours in the gym every day, um, Monday to Friday. I have weekends off. <laughs> um, it's really, it's interesting actually, because I probably do about half the amount of training that I used to do for basketball. Um, but with strength stuff, there's only so much you can do before you're just not getting any benefit from it. So it's, it's kind of nice in that respect. <laughs> So um, is it a sport that you can um, kind of keep up with the training during, during this lockdown? Have you got various things set up around your home to, to keep doing that strength training? Whereas obviously with basketball, you wouldn't, have been, you wouldn't have been out on a court playing at the moment. So is the powerlifting a good one for this lockdown period? Yeah, it is actually. Um, I've got my bench in the garage now and um, I've got a, uh, like a squat rack which I put a bar on and do some pull-ups and stuff like that I've got some dumbbells so I can do pretty much a full training program um the only issue is that I don't have access to physio and I am no spring chicken and I need that physio <laughs> I imagine yeah sort of various muscles getting tight and you do I bet you're actually desperate for a few sort of stretches and a bit of physio aren't you yeah, I mean, my boyfriend tries, um, but he's not trained. And so he gets a bit nervous with certain stuff. Um, but uh, the physio has, um, for powerlifting has given us some pointers and so how he can help me. Um, and uh, I've just got to keep on top of like foam rolling and stuff like that, just to do what I can without access to physio. And with the year long postponement of the games, does that actually feel like? That's now a long, long way again. A long, long way away again. Yeah, um, it was when they were doing five hundred days to go again, um, <laughs> and it was like, oh, that seems far. <laughs> but um, I was saying in the build-up to the games' original date that I didn't have enough time, so I've been given time. I just have to make the most of it, and it's difficult in this environment. My goal is to come out of the lockdown in a similar place so I went, where I went in it and then I, at least I know I've not lost any strength and I can build from there. Because obviously you know silver medal at the Commonwealth as we said but when it comes to Tokyo Paralympics do you have quite a strong sense of where you are in the in the pecking order in your particular competition and you know where you might be in, in the race for a medal? Um, yeah, I mean, I was fifth in the rankings. I probably still am fifth in the rankings, um, but I've not looked lately. Um, and uh, the person ahead of me in fourth has lifted 127, and the person in third has lifted 131. So I'm not a million miles away, but I know that those standards will just keep going up. So um I, my goal for the original day of the games was 135. That's what I wanted to lift. And that would have put me in kind of in the mix for a medal, um, bronze, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, uh, gold and silver, uh, they're, they're just phenomenally strong. Um, that would be about 150 kilos I need to be lifting for that. So that's going to take me a little bit longer to do. <laughs> And just thinking about other sort of factors of this lockdown, is there a regimented diet you have to stick to normally as part of your training and preparation? Has that kind of loosened up a little bit over this lockdown period or is it even harder? Um, I am still trying to keep my body weight about the same, um, if not a little bit lighter, just so that then when we come out of the lockdown, I can build from there. Um, but the, actually the biggest thing I'm struggling with is um, I normally eat the two meals a day minimum um and i just can't get enough meat and enough protein <laughs> so um i'm just struggling on on that side of things um my protein goals are pretty high 
daily and and I'm struggling to meet them so um yeah I'm having to kind of just do what I can do um and uh not really stress about it because there's no point is there <laughs> I've just been typing in on my phone down here. 125 kilograms is 19.6 stone. Oof, dearie me. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I know it's exactly the same weight, but it sounds even worse in stone for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's something for people to be uh, be trying, or maybe not. Don't don't try this. Maybe either. not. <laughs> not without supervision. <laughs> Listen, thanks, Louise, for uh, giving me the time to chat and um, hopefully everything returns to normal as soon as possible. And we'll look forward to seeing you going for that medal in, in Tokyo. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.